In this video, I want to talk about the wah block in the Axe FX3 and how to set it up with an external expression pedal. I'm going to do a really, really short skim of how you can use other modifiers in the Axe FX3 if you don't have an expression pedal. But I'm guessing most of the people who want to set up a wah want to use it with some sort of expression pedal. A quick word of warning, you must make sure you're using a TRS cable, something where the ends look like this with the two little black bands and not an instrument cable when you're setting this up. I cannot stress that enough. It needs to be TRS from your expression pedal to the Axe FX3. Here's the setup that I use live and that I'll be using in this video. I've got a Mission SP1. I'm using the TRS out. You can see my little TRS cable end here. And I'm plugging that into pedal input number one on the back of my FC6 controller over here. If you didn't have an FC6 and you wanted to connect directly to the Axe FX3, you could run a long TRS cable from your expression pedal to pedal one or pedal two on the back of the Axe FX3. Before you go any further, it's really important to calibrate your expression pedal. So from the front panel, if you're using an FC controller, hit setup, go to the FC controllers menu, and then use the page feature to navigate across to remote. You can then scroll down to pedal one type. We're gonna set that to continuous and pedal one calibration. We are gonna hit enter here. And then what I'm gonna do is on my pedal, I will go heel down and then I'll go toe down. And then when I've done that, I can hit enter again and I'm finished. My pedal is now calibrated. If you're not using an FC controller, you would go into the in out menu for example, and navigate to the pedal section there. If you're using pedal input number one, obviously use pedal input number one, set it to continuous and calibrate. Before we get into the nitty gritty of the wah block, here is my clean guitar sound. This is a Strat with some Sir ML pickups and I'm using the Brit JM45 model. Nice clean sound happening there. Let's drop a wah block. In front of the amp here, the way we would do it with a real amp, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time. So if you just drop the block in, it's essentially gonna act like a fixed wah. So if I engage the block here, you can hear that it's just a fixed part of the wah sweep, depending on where this control parameter is set. So I want my expression pedal set up to control the control parameter. The way we do that is we right click it in Axe Edit and this brings up the modifier menu for this control parameter and I wanna set my source for the modifier accordingly. In this case, I've got my expression pedal connected to FC1 pedal one, so I'm gonna select that. If you've got your expression pedal connected to the back of the physical Axe FX itself, you want pedal one or pedal two. Again, make sure you get the right assignment. So I'll go FC1 pedal one. Now, as I move my expression pedal through its range of motion, I'm gonna have a wah-wah effect that I can control with my foot, just like a traditional wah. The only issue is, if I wanna turn the wah on and off, I would need to assign the bypass state to something on my FC pedal, and I don't wanna do that. I just wanna step on my wah and have it work. I grew up playing crybaby style wah pedals where you press the toe switch down. Uh, the other main type of wah are the spring-loaded ones like the Morley pedals where they default to being like heel down. So what we're gonna do is set up auto engage here so that when I move from my default position on the wah, it will turn the block on and also let me control it. Exactly what I want. So I'm gonna go to auto engage. You can choose between all of these. I just go for medium position on here. And what this does at the moment is when I have my wah heel down, the effect is gonna be off. But like I said, I grew up playing a crybaby. If you're used to like a Morley style wah, or if you've got an expression pedal that's spring loaded and kicks back to that heel position, you don't have to do anything else. However, if you're a crybaby guy like me, turn the off value all the way up to 95%. This means that when the wah is toe down, the effect is gonna be off. And as I push down on it with my heel, it's gonna engage the effect. Sweet, that's how I would set up auto engage. And 
really, you could do that and then go through the different wah types until you find one that you like the sound of. Let's just have a listen to the basic wah types. The moment we've got this Clyde McCoy wah, there's a color sound style wah, which is this one. <laughs> The funk wah is really, really fun. Uh, I read in the wiki that this is meant to be like the shaft style wah, and it's 100% that sound. We've got a Morley style wah. <laughs> So with a clean sound, I mean, they all sound like a wah-wah. They all have a slightly different sweep going on and they're all blending in varying amounts of the actual wah and the clean signal. So for me, like I said, I really like the stock crybaby. I'll bring that one up and we'll have a look at some of the advanced parameters. The ones that I find myself tweaking a lot are the frequency max control, the fat control, the resonance and the cue tracking. So Let's just have a listen to what they do and we'll talk about them. The fat is a like a, basically a wet dry blend. When you've got it all the way off, there's no dry signal in there. It's 100% wah wah. <laughs> With it all the way up, you've got a 50-50 blend between Wawa and your clean sound. I normally like to set the fat control to about one o'clock. I find that gives me a good blend between the Wawa sound and the clean blend signal. Having the clean blend signal blended in there, I think means that at the like extreme values, it doesn't get too harsh or too washed out and you don't lose the guitar in the mix. So the frequency max control will explore a little bit more when I dial up a high gain sound. I normally like to turn this down for a high gain sound uh, and I turn it up a little bit for kind of like a funk sound. So I'd probably turn this guy up a little bit just to give it like more of a sweep. And I turn the frequency minimum down a little bit, uh, maybe not that much, but about there. This gives us this. I like the sound of that for sort of like a clean, funky wah. The resonance cue does this all the way off. This should really be called the quack control because the higher you turn it, the quackier and more wah wah it kind of gets. So if you really want that kind of wobbly quacky wah sound, turn the resonance up. If you don't want that, turn the resonance down. I'll sort of put it back to one o'clock again. And then we've got the cue tracking. The reason being that wah wahs you know, as they sweep different frequencies, kind of the width of the sweep changes depending on where you are on the pedal. So if you turn tracking all the way off, you get this. And if you turn it all the way up. Kind of gives you more of that vowel sound depending on where you've got it set. So this is kind of like, again, using this with the resonance cue can really control the quack of the wah. Turning it down, I think, sounds pretty cool for these kind of clean sounds.
So it's really cool if you want a funk style wah. So my suggestion would be to get a wah type that sounds close to what you want and then to go in and tweak these parameters to really fine tune the wah. Of course, you don't have to tweak any of this stuff. You can just bring up a crybaby or a Clyde or the mortal wah or the funk wah, depending on what you want to do. And you don't have to touch anything. I think the wahs sound fantastic as they are. But I want to explore a couple of extra features in here. So I'm going to swap over to a high gain sound and a guitar with humbuckers and show you how I would dial in a wah for that kind of sound. All right, this is my PRS SC245 and I've got the USA 2C++ dialed up. Sounds like this. <laughs> So two of my favorite wah-wah players uh, when it comes to like really hard rock kind of stuff are Jerry Cantrell, I love his wah sound, and John Petrucci. Now, John uses the Rat Crybaby and he obviously has a signature pedal. Jerry has a signature Crybaby as well, but there's kind of a real trick. If Say if you want to do the Jerry Cantrell thing, it's to bring the frequency max down. So what I would do is just choose uh, the Crybaby where we were and leave all the settings as stock, but all I would do is bring this frequency max down to about 1400 hertz. So if you've got a high gain sound, this is really gonna target that mid range and help your guitar cut through the mix. You can also go to the Dunlop website and just look up what the maximum and minimum frequencies are for all the different signature wires. So if you wanted like the slash wire sound or something like that, you can go and do that. The Jerry one's about 14, 1500 hertz. And I would bring the level up on this guy to be zero, this is what it sounds like. It sounds gigantic and fat. I might even turn the fat control and the cue tracking down just a little bit. And I might even bring the minimum frequency down a little bit as well. Maybe not that low. Something like that gives us this. <laughs> Awesome. That gives you such a vocal wah sound when you're using a high gain sound. It really helps your solos kind of poke out. It doesn't get too harsh when you get really close to the end of the pedal range, which I like. Sometimes wahs can be really, really uh, just piercing and brittle. So that's what I would do for like a Jerry Cantrell wah kind of sound. And that's pretty much the wah that I use in 95% of my presets. Uh, I have it saved in the block library as Cantrell wah. And you can see... Yeah, the settings are pretty close. I would probably normally go in and tweak these a little bit, but that's I have that saved in the block library so I can just bring it up as my default wah. We've also got a graphic EQ in the wah section. This is something that was added a few firmwares ago. And I love this because if you're a fan of like the Petrucci thing or the Rack Crybaby, you can go in and use this to really help your wah tone poke out even further in the mix. You could do something like this, for example. You could go in and pull a little bit of low end out and also pull a bit of extreme high end out here and really kind of boost the mid range with your wah so that when you turn it on, not only do you get the effect of the wah, you get a really cool mid range focus solo boost. With the EQ off, you get this. <laughs> And I did a tutorial copying the John Petrucci wire settings. Uh, I've got them saved in the block library here. Essentially, if you kind of do this with the graphic EQ, I added a bit of level boost and I brought the frequency minimum and frequency maximum down. Everything else is pretty much stock in the Crybaby wire block. This is like an insanely vocal, expressive wire sound for high gain. I absolutely love it, particularly with this guitar and this amp. <laughs> Yeah. 
you can hear that having that frequency minimum really pull that gives you that kind of boing sound at the bottom, which I really like for some things. Often what I will do is have a wah block in a lot of my presets with channel A set up for that kind of like Jerry Cantrell style wah and channel B set up with these like Petrucci style settings or and channel C if I've got like a kitchen sink style preset I'll have for one of the funky style wahs where I turn the cue tracking down and the resonance up a little bit. Now, you can do a few other really cool things with the wah block. If you wanted like a Tom Morello style thing, uh, sit it after the amp. I would probably put it between the amp and the cab block. So you get this kind of effect. I'm gonna turn that boost down. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna go back to these control settings. And this, having wah after distortion is like so different to having it before distortion. It gives you this insanely wide effect. <laughs> And if you want to do all the Morello style, like trigger style effects, that's a really cool one, but that's something I almost never ever use. The other thing you can do is have two wire blocks in parallel. So what I'll do, I'll bring up, you know, these presets again, the blocks library is so handy here. I'm going to copy this and I'll chuck it up here and paste it. But what I'm going to do with the modifier is I'll right click here and on, on the other wire, I'm going to set the minimum and the maximum the other way around. So this would be like having two wires that are like out of phase with one another, which is a pretty cool trick. I'll set this guy up in parallel right here. And what I'll do for this other wire is I'll set the bypass mode to mute so that it's totally out of the signal when we are not wiring. And when we are, it comes in. So this is what it sounds like. It's Pretty cool, I think. Really, really interesting variation of the wah thing. The other thing you could do is say, chuck a formant block in there and use that if you really want a vocal style wah. We'll go and set the control source to be FC1. Pedal number one, as before, auto engage will be medium position, off value will be 95, matching my wah block. Bypass mode will be mute. And what I'm gonna do, I'll have the start to be or, and I'll have the middle to be ah, uh, and I'll have the end to be ah, uh. hang on. Yeah, like horror movie ah. Uh. And what this does is really gonna emphasize those A style Vowel, so it should be like an awa kind of sound blended in with the wa. It's subtle, but if you really, really want to amp up the kind of vocal style thing you've got going on with a wah, the format is really cool. You can also chuck a filter block in there and kind of do a similar thing. So yeah, the sky's the limit with the wah block in here. Probably my favorite sounding wah that I've ever had in my life is the wah block here in the Axe FX3. The other great thing about it, because there's no real inductors or anything, it's so quiet. I used to hate having a wah pedal on in my rig. It would add so much noise. Whereas with this, with auto engage, it's absolutely dead quiet. Uh, I can have all the advantages of having like multiple wahs on my board using the channels feature. I could dial in the frequency max and minimum and all the other parameters for the style of music that I want to play. And uh, yeah, it's so easy. You can have two wires at the same time, do a bunch of other cool stuff. One before, one after the amp, have them in parallel, have them in series if you want. You could have it as a fixed wire. You could also, rather than use an expression pedal, you could say just set the wire to be like an LFO or something like that. If you wanted it to, I would turn auto engage off in this case, but if you wanted an auto wire, there you go, you've got it. You can go into the controllers menu, go to LFO one, set the rate, and this is just going to give you a wah that sweeps up and down automatically. Alternatively, you could set the control to be set to the envelope. So you could have a touch wah. Or 
Or you could set it to the pitch source, which is kind of weird, meaning that as you play higher up on the neck and lower on the neck, it's going to basically be really wired out and dull and really bright here. I'd actually probably do the opposite. So I go like minimum would be quite bright for like a Michael Schenker cocked wire style sound. As I go up, it's going to like bring the wire back. <laughs> basic operation of using an expression pedal. It's pretty easy to set up and pretty easy to dial in, but then we've got all these other modifiers. You know, if you wanted to do uh, like the sequa style thing and have a sequence going through there, you could assign the modifier source to be the sequencer or the pitch follower or the envelope. Like I said, the sky's the limit with this guy. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it went on and on and on, but hopefully there's everything you ever wanted to know about the wire block in the Axe FX3. I'll see you guys next time.